I was away last week when the Call of the Wild screening took place here in Vancouver, but I went and checked it out last night, and I had a pretty good time with this movie. The minute Harrison Ford is on a movie poster, you know I am signing up, I am supporting that movie, I'm going to go and see it. Harrison Ford is my favorite actor of all time, so I guess full disclosure there, but I think if you've ever watched DP ever in our 25-year history, you know that about me. I love Harrison Ford, and I think he's a, an international treasure, and he's superb in this movie. He plays an old man that has retreated to the woods because he's gone through something tragic and eventually encounters this wonderful dog named Buck, created by computers. And you never forget that the whole time you're watching The Call of the Wild. Hey, Jesus! Watch yourself. Buck has a, a pretty cool adventure. He starts off in this city and he's kind of sheltered and taken care of by a bunch of wonderful humans in this beautiful house and he's a little bit spoiled and then eventually ends up in the Alaskan wilderness as part of a dog sled team led by the terrific Omar Sy and Kara G who have this treacherous mail route where they have to race through all kinds of crazy environments and lots and lots of danger leading this ragtag group of dogs that don't quite know what they're doing but eventually fall in line. Buck is one of those dogs and it's you know hard going for him at first because he doesn't know anything about the wilderness or what to do as a member of a dog sled team but eventually overcomes all of that stuff and they deliver mail everywhere and it's quite thrilling to watch this dog sled team work together through thick and thin, thin ice, uh, and deal with all of the problems that they've got to encounter along the way, all of the danger that they have to encounter along the way. And we see Buck kind of become his own dog, you know, and really kind of live up to his potential. And all of that stuff is actually expertly handled, even though you are always fully aware that you're looking at computer-generated animals. And it's problematic, for sure, because we've seen, you know, lots of CG creations over the years now done to better effect. Most recently in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, where a cartoon blue hedgehog is believable somehow. It's not quite the same with Buck, even though I do have to say that the animators have done a pretty phenomenal job, especially on close-ups where, you know, the background is blurred out a little bit and you're not really focused on all how it's been composited into the scene. The composition, I think, is the problem with the CG effects here. You're constantly aware of eye lines and it's like the edging around the characters and stuff, especially when other elements are in focus and you can see that somehow this CG dog has been placed into context and been placed into scenes. Some Sometimes it's effective, sometimes it's really, really not effective. But I do have to say when we go close up on the dog's face and we get the animations and we get to see Buck kind of thinking and imagining how he is going to play out his scenario, you get lost in it and you can also understand some of the decisions why the filmmakers went in this direction. Partially, I think, to alleviate some of the dangers that a stunt animal would have to go through, but also because they really wanted to, you know, get a full performance out of this Buck creation. And mush! I think that they should have done a menagerie of real dogs and then also some CG work as well. And I think that the movie would stand up a little bit stronger than it does. I think that relying fully on CG animals has been to this film's detriment, unfortunately. But that's not to say that the movie isn't thrilling and that there isn't some wonderful work, you know, particularly, you know, across the beautiful vistas and the wonderful wilderness scenes that we get to go into, which is great. There are lots of CG wilderness scenes as well, and some of those are very easy to point out but still a lot of this stuff was shot on location and it's clear and it's gorgeous and it's lovely lovely to see all of that stuff and also I really felt for Harrison Ford and his character and I liked his narration and you know I like the kind of journey that he goes on and this path that leads him eventually to partner up and friend up with Buck I kind of fell in love with Buck too even though I knew I was looking at something crafted in a computer it was still artfully done and the tale is a classic one. This is a, a story that's been around forever. This idea of leaving the familiar and venturing off into the unknown and having a lifetime of adventure. Pretty wonderful. We could go, you and me. See what's out there.
It's also a heartwarming tale. It's very wholesome. There's a little bit of danger in here, but it's certainly family friendly. It feels, even though this is a 20th century movie, it's, it came out under the Fox banner and then Disney now owns Fox and so they're releasing it through their 20th century banner. It feels very Disney-like. But the one thing that I do have to say, and, and I tweeted this last night after I saw the movie, is that Harrison Ford was game for this. He was good. He was into it. And he's been doing the promotional circuit. He's invested in this. You can see it on screen that he really wanted to give some gravitas and some weight to this character. And he wanted to kind of portray the adventurousness of this character. And he sells it. And he's wonderful. And so what I was thinking the whole time is that this could have been an investment into an older Han Solo adventure film, you know? And what we got, of course, is Disney marketing and everybody kind of trying to figure out, well, we Han Solo's back, we got him, and let's make this young Solo movie. Not that I hated that movie, but I just, I hate the fact that we squandered an opportunity to have another adventure with Han Solo and Chewbacca at the age that Harrison Ford is. He made a deal to be in a movie where he's friends with a dog. I think if a script had been put together with him to have an adventure, you know, with an older Chewbacca, and he's an older Han Solo, and it was a good movie and a good script, he probably would have done it, and we would have got a killer older Han Solo film, a two-hour adventure, which I think could have been a lot of fun, because for my money, old Han Solo was the best part of The Force Awakens, and so I was constantly thinking about that and how, you know, now there's all the talk about Han Solo, or that Harrison Ford being too old to be Indiana Jones, and that movie is coming, and of course there's a lot of skepticism because people don't like Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Part time. I get it, I get all that, but listen, this man is coming to work. He's prepared to work. He was fantastic in Blade Runner. He was fantastic in Star Wars, The Force Awakens. And again, he's fantastic in The Call of the Wild. So don't sell my boy Harrison Ford short. And honestly, Disney, you had a real opportunity to make a killer movie with old Han and old Chewie, and we would have been in heaven. So I was sad about that. I was I was a little bit wistful about that. Maybe that's still a possibility. Maybe they make a Disney Plus movie or a Disney Plus show or something like that. I would be excited about that, but I gotta tell you, 76 or 77 year old Harrison Ford is terrific in The Call of the Wild. Thanks. It's a pretty fun movie. I don't know if you have to rush out to the theater to see it, but I think you're gonna enjoy it when you do, even if you're picking apart the CG work that's in this film. Solid, family, fun. I'm gonna give The Call of the Wild 7.5 out of 10.